Here. Mr. Underwood. Here. Thank you. I'm going to, uh, as usual, begin our meeting with the reading of our mission statement. And the mission of Northmont City Schools is to provide students an exceptional education with diverse opportunities so they maximize their potential and are productive, responsible citizens. That being said, we're going to move on to our um, first item of business, which is the um, a special recognition to two students who certainly are on their way to fulfilling our mission. And I'm going to ask Mr. Thomas to talk about them a little bit. Thank you, Mrs. Bloom. Uh, prior to the meeting, we had uh, an opportunity to, to meet with two of our students and uh, get some get some pictures taken out front. Uh, Miss. Mrs. Stormer, uh, one of our, our teachers, um, had been working with Bennett Stouter and Mike Point um, this past year on a project that uh, I did share with the board a while back that had a chance to one on curve bottoms. And um, they submitted their, their video as well as their one page paper. And we are proud to say that they were awarded first place in the nation in the Explore Vision contest. Wow. What that means is they receive a $10,000 savings bond that is used towards college, an iPad, a certificate, and a banner. Unfortunately, they were also supposed to have been watching D.C. for a ceremony, and in lieu of that, we present them to the board meeting tonight. So, uh, again, <laughs> expense paid trip to Inglewood. In <laughs> they are outstanding young men. If you haven't had a chance to, uh, to view their video, uh, they are sixth graders, and you would think you were watching a college presentation. Uh, they were e even able to uh, get access to a landing strip because their project was about the propulsion that's expelled from jets that they could uh, capture that energy and, and put it into turbines. The idea was that they could power at least the airports that they, uh, uh, and, and maybe even put some into the grid. This was totally their idea. I talked to the teacher tonight, and uh, these, uh, these young men, we were speak them a few times, I think, over the next few years. I told them this is probably the, not the last time that I will present a plaque to them. But the congratulations to them and their families for this outstanding accomplishment. First in the nation speaks for itself. Congratulations awesome. to them. Yeah. Yeah. They were, you have to know, they were so adorable. Um, they were well-spoken. And um, from what their parents said, that this was this was like a labor of love for them. They told me that the hardest part was writing the 11 page paper, that the science part of it was, was not as tough as the 11 page paper. Um, but uh, young men to be proud of and to watch as they, um, as they move on through the secondary part of their um, education here at Northmont. So that's awesome. Um, this evening, we uh, do not have any visitors, communication, or recognitions to uh, add, so we're going to move on to our treasurer's report, Mrs. Ferrara. Thank you, Mrs. Bloom. I have three items for you tonight for your approval. The regular meeting minutes from May 11th, twenty. Also, the transfer of $2,500 from the general fund to the academic challenge fund. This is to help offset some of their expenses for travel that they do for all the competitions. Um, and also, I have the Mike May Financial Report for your approval. Just to let you know, total receipts uh, for the month were May. And we're at one million eight hundred thirty-eight thousand eight hundred twenty-one. Total expenditures were four million eight hundred fifty-eight thousand four hundred sixty-one. Um, receipts were a little low last month because we got our first, um, um, we'd say, cut from the state from the from the eight hundred seventy-four thousand dollars that we're expected to get from get cut from the state. Um, so that. We got we saw that first uh, reduced amount um, in May. Um, total for the year at fifty five million eight hundred sixty five thousand nine hundred forty three, and total expenditures were at fifty two million eight seventy five six zero six. So that is uh, my report for you tonight, and that's all I have. Thank you. This evening we're asked to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of May eleventh, twenty twenty. We're asked to approve a transfer of $2,500 from the general fund to the academic challenge fund. And finally, we're asked to approve the financial report for May. Does anyone have any uh, questions? Um, do we need to separate anything? Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. 
Second. Second. Um, any discussion? Mrs. Ferrara, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Woody? Yes. Mr. Poulos? Yes. Dr. Escalita? Yes. Mrs. Bloom? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Underwood? Yes. Thank you. Moving on to the personnel agenda, does anyone require part A? Does anyone require any uh, separation? Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. A second? Second. Discussion? Mrs. Ferrara, will you please call the roll? Mr. Poulos? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mrs. Bloom? Yes. Dr. Espelita? Yes. Mrs. Woody? Yes. Thank you. Moving on to Section B. Does anyone require separation? Do I have uh, a motion to approve? Linda, real quick, I cannot see Section B for whatever reason on my, on my phone. I'm assuming there are some notices on Section B. Uh, there's a section B. There are no items on. There section are no B. items on. Section okay, that's B. why I couldn't see Sorry. it. Sorry. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I was wondering if am I am I seeing something I'm supposed to be seeing? Okay, got it. We're, we're, we just were testing you. Okay, it was thank you. Best. And you passed. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, then we'll move on to the consent agenda. We're asked this evening to approve the list of 2020 Northmont High School graduates. We're asked to approve policy 2370.01, the blended learning as an emergency policy. We're asked to accept the wellness committee report for 2019-20 school year. We're asked to approve the adoption of the statistics and probability with applications textbook Bedford Friedman and Worth Publisher for the new applied statistics course in the at the high school in the amount of eleven thousand nine hundred thirteen dollars and sixty cents coming from the permanent improvement fund. We're also asked to approve Bill Billbury Construction as a vendor for the Kleps Early Learning Center's parking lot expansion product project in the amount of $354,236 as um, per purchasing policy 6320. We're asked to approve the revisions to the compensation policies and finally to review the athletic code of conduct for the 2020-2021 um, school year that we received today. So if you haven't checked your email, you may not have received it um, we may not have seen it yet, but we're asked to review it. Uh, does anyone require any separation? Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Move. Second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Mrs. Ferrara, will you please call the roll? Mr. Walker? Yes. Dr. Escalita? Yes. Mrs. Bloom? Yes. Mr. Poulos? Yes. Mrs. Woody? Yes. Uh, Mr. Underwood? Yes. Thank you. Moving on to board reports. Does any any board members have anything to report this evening? Just I on do that. CTC. Oh. Yep. CTC real quick. Um, we are right on schedule, if not ahead of schedule, because of the, uh, as far as the building. And awesome. Yeah, so everything's moving right along. Wow. Great. Isaiah, do you have something to report? Yeah, I have one thing. So there's not a whole lot going on in the school, but there's definitely a whole lot going on in the world right now. And I think um, i like to recognize two students who are really taking the mission statement of the Northmont City Schools and really exemplifying that and being productive, responsible students. So in response to the um, the murder of George Floyd, we have two students, Bryce Alisher and Peyton Runyon, who are organizing a peaceful march from Centennial Park to the Clayton Police Department 
to address the racial inequalities in America, as well as honor the memory of Karina Broski. And that's going to be this Friday at 4.30. So I think that's just something awesome that some students are doing that I think we should recognize. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah. Anyone else have anything to report? I do have something to report this evening. Um, I, as you well know, are, am a part of the steering committee for equity and adequacy in school funding. And um, along with um, many other people across the state, we are uh, quite distraught over the Ed Choice voucher bills that are uh, moving through the state and the dollars that are involved here. So um, recently, the, a school in northeastern Ohio, the Cleveland Heights University Heights School District, started um, investigating and talking to attorneys and um, they are, I'm not sure whether they've already filed the lawsuit or going to file a lawsuit um, against the state of Ohio, similar to the DeRolf um, lawsuit from years and years ago, to um, stop the voucher expansion. The Cleveland Heights University Heights um, made the, the kind of like the last straw was when 91% of the vouchers that they are um, going, to, going to lose as part of their state dollars um, are going to students who never, ever attended public school, the public school system at all. And as you remember from being um, part of the discussion at last um, OSBA, the uh, conference, um, this has been a real... Uh, thorn in our side, if you will, and amounts to a tremendous amount of dollars that are going to work. We all, all the public schools, traditional public schools tend to lose um, to students who are, um, have never even attended our public schools. So um, you'll notice at, at, uh, that when it comes on our consent agenda, the amount of dollars that we're going to be asked to approve to the Ohio Equity and Adequacy of School Funding Council is going to be an increase over last year um, because uh, we're going to help, um, they're asking districts across the state to help in, in this regard, um, help fund this lawsuit. And eventually, it's, it's like an investment because eventually it's going to save us a lot of money. Um, so I wanted to share all that with you and more information to follow. I don't know, Tony, if you know any more or want to add to it at this time. I would, I would just add, Mrs. Bloom, that uh, we did receive more information on that Friday late. And so uh, we will prepare a resolution for our next board meeting and uh, have a chance for you guys to look that over a little ahead of time. And hopefully, um, in, in my recommendation, pass that and uh, continue to uh, fight for what's best in public education. And uh, thank you, Mrs. Bloom, for... Uh, serving on that executive committee and always thinking of public education. First. Thank you. Any other board reports this evening? Uh, Mr. Thomas. All right. Um, I would like to talk uh, about what I think if, if we have an audience out there tonight, I understand if we, we are getting uh, quite an audience for, for these on Facebook Live, uh, the one thing that they probably are most interested in is reopening of school. And so um, with that, I, I just want to share that we are uh, devising various scenarios, and uh, we are working with the uh, public health director here in Montgomery, and, and it's called, in, in this community, it's called Public Health Montgomery and, and, and Dayton, and um, his name is Jeff Cooper, and we think we made some, some breakthroughs. Uh, we, we have scenarios. Every scenario includes remote learning as an option. Uh, we just know that uh, that will relieve a lot of our, our parents and, and, uh, and possibly guardians, grandparents raising uh, children if they know they, they have that option. But we are looking at uh, what it would mean under current guidelines to, to come back and just say, so understand, it wouldn't be coming say March 1st. Uh, current guidelines are six foot distancing, face mask, and, and a lot of things like that. Now, we, have, we are working to see if we can get some of those things. Um, 
uh, reconsidered or at least reduced because uh, if we have to come back at six foot distancing, it, it would be so limiting that we it, it would not look anything like what we have now. Uh, we would have some scenarios where we could only uh, have space for 12 students in the classroom. Well, that, that doesn't work. Uh, 26 to 30 kids on a bus. But we're, the good news is we're working, and, and all the superintendents in the county are working together with Mr. Cooper, and we, we are hopeful that we can come up with something. Uh, the other scenario would be some sort of partial week or, or um, you know, days, things like that. So we're working on those scenarios. And then the third scenario would be a total remote learning. Uh, but our hope is, and, and what I think resonated with Mr. Cooper was that we believe that the best place and the safest place for most of our students is to come back to school. And he's trying to figure out a way to do that. And, and I think he agreed with that as well. As, as we learn more, we'll continue to share it. We do have, I want to be upfront and transparent, we do have a parent survey ready to go, but we would like to wait to see if the uh, health department is going to reduce some of those restrictions before we release that, because that might really influence the way parents would uh, complete that survey. So it's not going to try to hide anything. Uh, we just think that the timing should be right. And if, if they're thinking about uh, uh, changing some of those restrictions, it would be with better information for us if we get it after public health change. If we don't hear changes within the next week or so, we'll probably go ahead and send it out as this. Um, I want to thank Mrs. Dillon for the high school summer school report. It was a refreshing report. I know that when we thought about having remote uh, learning, summer school is the only option. Uh, we weren't sure how that was going to go, but we had a, a really good turnout. Actually, the numbers, I think, for the last I think they were a reflection of a number of things, and uh, so uh, thank, thank them for, for putting together a quality summer school. I'd like to thank uh, Mrs. Sipes and, um, and Pam for the wellness report. I hope you had a chance to look that over. That's the annual report that we, they normally give face-to-face, -face, which is more difficult. I'd also like to thank um, Mr. Kinnett and Mr. Mr. Watson for the work they did on the uh, the Learning Center parking lot contract. Uh, again, there's no general fund money was used for that, and that was a huge need there. When we have events there, we just do not have enough parking. And then, as important, if not more important, it will be safer for a drop off of the preschool. And so, uh, and then the fact that it came in way under budget is uh, definitely uh, timing is always important in construction. I think timing is very important. Um, I'd like to point out that we have a uh, a graduate and a former teacher at Northmont by the name of Garrett Carter. And now we can refer to him as Dr. Carter. He uh, re recently defended his dissertation at Indiana University. And a lot of the work he's doing is uh, is with uh, cultural sensitivity. Actually, his, uh, his uh, doctor is, is entitled Exploring Culturally Responsive School Leadership. And he also looked at what we are doing here at Northmont and I've read about half of it. I just got it the, the other um, Friday afternoon, about a I don't know, 200 page document, about halfway through it. And it does reinforce that what we're doing here at Northmont is the right way to, to do things. Cultural responsive school leadership that we've been participating in with the county. can't even get on anymore.
Okay, we're going to, um, I'm not aware of any new business, but in old business, um, at our last meeting, we spoke about the need to um, do something with our levy that is expiring. And um, Anne, I'm going to let you talk, if you will, a little bit about the process that we have to go through in order to, to put that on the ballot. Sure, yes, ma'am. Um, tonight, um, we have... I, I presented with you guys. I presented both of you, all of you, with two resolutions. The one resolution would have been for um, a renewal, and also one for a continuous uh, levy. Um, after the your decision tonight, um, whichever way you guys would choose, I will now then present that to the Montgomery County, um, and actually Dart County and my and Miami County, because we do have some properties that actually lie in those counties. Um, and then at that point in time, they will get a estimate from the county of how much money that money will, that levy will bring in. Um, currently, it brings in about uh, three point five million dollars to the district. And once we get that, we will then have another resolution um, that needs to be passed. And then I will actually then formally present that to the board of elections to put that on the, the November ballot. Okay. Any questions about the process for many of the board members? Uh, Ann, what what are your final cutoff date to have that turned in? Um, for both resolutions, have to be done by August fifth of this year. Okay. All right. Um, we last last we spoke at our last board meeting, we had a discussion about um, whether or not to um, make this a continuous levy or um, Put it on the ballot for five years there was uh it sounded to me like there was total agreement in doing something with that issue and putting it on the ballot in um in november i um i guess what i need now is some direction from the rest of the board as to how you want to proceed do we want do we want to um take a look at five year or do we want to take a look at continuous um, Linda, I'll, if you don't mind, I'll speak first here. I just was, you know, been thinking about this a, a lot. And then, you know, um, my feeling still is to do continuous uh, to be able to get that off of our plate or get it off of the, um, what do you call it, or the plate, I guess. And then, um, and I think when uh, going that way, we will really have to be cog cognizant even more so to hopefully communicate to the community uh, what this really means i mean there's a lot going on in the world right now there's a lot going on in this community and so but i think continuous is the best way to go from here in my opinion anyone else want to weigh in i just weigh in just a little bit here uh i guess the my biggest um uh, I don't know, concern or not is that we make everybody aware of uh, the fact that we are going on the ballot and it is a non-increase in taxes and we have to get that point of point across also my concern is since there's been a lot of of um, you know mail-in votes versus this that do you know we have to make sure that everybody is aware that we are on the ballot and that we do need their vote and uh you know with all those uh you know all being said uh, i'm with Jane in uh, endorsing the continuous. Um, I think that the continuous is um, a way to, I don't think anybody in our community really thinks that we're not never going to need the money. We've just taken a 800, over an $800,000 hit. Um, and the fact that we're renewing is a good thing. There's a lot of unrest financially out there in the community and the country. So um, I, I think when the day comes down the road that we might need new money, we won't have to worry about this, these dollars if we go continuous and pass. That's my feeling. Chris, Jerry, you got something to add? No, I'm a proponent of the continuous just because of the fact from a uh, treasury, treasury standpoint, we know what we're dealing with and we don't have to make assumptions that there are no, we're not going to receive those funds. So it's easier from the treasurer's department as well as, you know, I, I, like I said, I'm just a proponent of continuous. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Does somebody want to make a motion? Make a motion that we uh, put on the ballot, uh, have our treasurer, I'm not sure of the word, the verbiage here, that our treasurer uh, advise the uh, county of our being on the ballot for a continuous period of time. Second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? Anne, is that the verbiage you need? Yeah, I, I can put down the resolution, the proper resolution for a continuous levy um, on this for a renewal of the, of the 5.9 mil levy. Correct. Um, refresh our memory, it was passed originally in... I believe this one was 2006. This actually was a 2016 one. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Mrs. Ferraro, will you please call the roll? Mr. Walker? Yes. Mrs. Woody? Yes. Mr. Poulos? Yes. Dr. Escalita? Yes. Mrs. Bloom? Yes. Mr. Underwood? Yes. Thank you um, to the board members. I, I I just really think that because of the financial landscape of um, our community and our country, I think we're all going to need to step up and um, really work hard to get this passed. I don't think that um, I, I think it's a good thing that there's uh, no new taxes involved with it, but I also don't think that we can rest on um, and relax. Uh, we really need to work hard like we always do, but we're going to need more people this time, and um, I, I know that I can count on all of you. Um, that being said, there is no reason to go into executive session. I do want to remind you all that on June 29th at 5.15 p.m., we're going to have a special board meeting that will allow us the um, opportunity to look at the year-end financials and any miscellaneous um, items that come up between now and then. Uh, so please make sure that's on your um, calendars. Also, um, before we leave, because I do believe we are leaders in the community and our community is one that comes together when people are hurting. There are many of us who are hurting, beginning with, but not limited to, our African-American community members. We need to have the courage to look into our hearts and bring about a change to unconscious and conscious bias. Bring ourselves to listen intently to those who look the same as us, as well as those who do not. Now we're going to say um, we're either going to be virtual, but hopefully we're going to be at the high school where we there is enough space for us to spread out social distance and allow the public to social distance as well. Uh, Linda, if I, could, I don't know if this is possible, wherever we would be at the high school to put the tables 
are, so we're looking at each other versus, you know, in a line so that way we can hear each other better. If that's possible, Tony, I don't know. Good idea. And a U shape kind of, but open something like U. that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Anything else? The 29th is definitely a virtual meeting correct. though, correct? Buildings are still closed. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we stand adjourned. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Now I can't. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.